So look, guys, if you can't master this one skill that I've got written on my screen right here, then I can guarantee you right now that you will fall victim to permanently hopping between strategy to strategy, never being able to actually improve on a strategy by yourself you're always going to be asking people for help you're never you're always going to be behind the next person you're never going to be ahead you're never really going to have any kind of sustained progress in this business or pretty much any business um in the future now it's not to say that if you can't succeed in trading you can't succeed in anything else trading is a very specific game however the focus skill set the ability to focus is so 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 important so i really recommend that you stick to the end of this video it is not going to be long i'm going to explain it quickly and as succinctly as i possibly can but first of all if you want to go ahead and like this video i would really appreciate it if you want to wait until the end of this video to like it to see if you actually do like this video then by all means, do that. Also, if you want to learn more about the psychological things, but also the in-depth strategies, we've got about four or five strategies in the academy right now and lots of different variations and all the back testing and all of that sort of stuff. We've got that all in the community right now. And we've got some absolutely incredible things coming in the Slack um, space right now. So I highly recommend checking that out. But focus. One of the key indicators of a lack of focus is an inability to do to make progress with trading. If you feel like the more you put in, the less you get out, more often than not, you're putting your time into the wrong things. You're not staying consistent on the things that you should do and you're relying on content. You're in that loop of basically, let's just draw. In fact, I think I drew this out already. There we go. Look at this. Okay, cool. So right here, we've got you dreaming of money. And so you go to YouTube, we, you know, blog post, whatever, you learn a concept, you have light bulb moment. You're like, oh my God, this makes sense. This is me. But this person is talking to me right now. Okay, let me take the strategy that they've just uh, taught me and let me go and start drawing on the chart. And, you know, whether you're demoing it or you shouldn't be live testing anything, but let's just say that you are and you've started losing you're going to start losing a lot of faith in that strategy. And you're going to start going back to YouTube. You're going to start slowly finding yourself looking at other videos with other things until you find that next thing where you're like, ah, this makes sense. This video is the one. This makes perfect sense. And then the cycle continues, continues and continues. And you actually elude yourself to what actually leads to getting the results. And what this also does is it trains you not to be focused. Because every single time something gets difficult, you are training yourself to go back and be distracted. You are constantly distracting, 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 distracting. But the real pain of this, the reason this process is so painful is because the one thing that you have managed to keep in your mind is this vision of making money. And you have that so clear in your mind, I want to make money but everything else is elusive, everything else you can't seem to concentrate on. And it is a very depressing cycle. And one that I was on for about two years, and it was just endlessly painful. I was pretty much isolating myself for that period. And it was just horrible. I really don't recommend that on, on anyone or wish that on anyone. And so focus is going to be the key thing. So how do we actually cultivate focus? Well, one thing you've got to understand is that focus, it's not about adding, it's about removing. This is such a powerful idea. And this was something that helped me immensely. Because when I used to think of focus, and I was looking at all the ways to increase my focus, and how do I double down and do all of this other stuff, I would be looking into things like, okay, how do I make my routine more rigid? How do I make sure that this is everything is predetermined and this, and I meditate and I do all this stuff. And my routine would be so complicated and so time regimented that I almost felt like locked into it. And I rarely actually got much of it done. What I didn't realize was that I, all I really needed to do was just remove the things that were really holding me back. And essentially I needed to make the transition from board professional excited newbie to board professional and you might be looking at this like what the hell excited newbie when everyone starts trading is super exciting you're learning about all of these things you've got the possibility of making money and how that's going to help your family and help you and your friends all of this emotion running through you're excited and 
it's exciting learning about the skill. Once you get into it, you learn about how technical analysis works. Maybe you look into how fundamental analysis works and all these other things, and you really enjoy it. You're beginning to find a, a real interest for it. And in that excitement, you get lost there. You never get out of that excitement phase. You're constantly learning and you're never actually doing the thing that allows you to transition to being a professional. Now, why do I say the board professional? Because the reality is, is that professional trading, trading in the correct way is actually quite boring because day in, day out, you should be following the same set of tested mechanical rules. So it's like, right, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Every day, same thing over and over and over again, analyzing the results for the week. Now, whilst there are ways to make that process fun and enjoy that, I still enjoy trading. It's nowhere near. I mean, it's a different level uh, of excitement that you get when you're first learning and when you haven't been consistent for at least three months straight. And so transitioning to board professional, I'd prefer to be a board professional when actually make money out of it than just be constantly excited and make nothing. And so how do we do that? So most traders day to day activities will look something like this, their time will be split between a job, watching Netflix for about two to five hours a day, watching TV, social media binging, trading content binges, trading screenshots on Instagram, randomly marking up concepts, they, concepts they've learned on YouTube or on a blog or something like that on their chart. You know, so they'll quickly pull up a chart and just plot something on for you know, five minutes to half an hour or, or something like this. Now, the problem with doing any of these is you're basically exciting your brain. You're getting your brain super excited and you're giving yourself easy rewards for nothing. And when it comes down to what we want, this is a game of risk and reward. Now, I'm not talking about trading here. I'm not talking about, oh, you need a good risk reward. I'm talking about when you do something, there is going to be a risk and there is going to be a reward. If you're constantly overloading yourself with the reward, constantly pleasuring yourself with, you know, binging your phone and scrolling through Instagram and doing all this stuff, what that's doing to your brain is it's exciting your brain, flicking through Instagram. Haha, that's funny. Let me scroll to the next video or the next picture or go and, you know, God forbid you're on TikTok or something like that. But, you know, you're just scrolling through you're like, oh, this is cool. Like, right. What you're doing there is you're just training your brain to be so pumped full of the reward that all you really, all your brain really wants to do is be excited. It's the same reason that it's easier to drink alcohol than it is to go on a 10 mile run every single day. It's the same reason it's easy to play video games than it is to sit down and analyze all of the data of your back testing and look for anomalies and other things like that that are crucial to understanding a strategy at the core and actually improving for yourself. And so it's not about adding new things in. It's about removing the things that are holding you back because your brain is going to gravitate towards those exciting tasks. So if you spend a fair amount of your day exciting your brain, it's going to backfire. An easy way to see what your habits are is to go to the screen time on your phone. So you go to settings. If you've got an iPhone, not sure what it is on Android, go to settings, you go down to screen time. And you can see the breakdown. You can see what all of your averages are each week, how much time you spend on your phone. And I'm telling you right now, it will shock you. It will shock you. For me, I was spending like seven, eight hours a day on my phone. I would spend about five or six of those hours in, on entertainment type apps like Netflix, YouTube, stuff like this. And then I'll spend such tiny amounts in all of the other areas. I'd spend, it's just ridiculous. But the main thing that you're looking for on screen time is how much time am I spending on entertainment? Now, entertainment comes in classes. At the top of the class, we've got the best forms of entertainment, the best forms to digest information from, because that's all everything is really. It's just different forms of information. The best is going to be reading. Why? Because reading is a long form piece of content. It's very long. You've got to read a whole book on one topic. OK, assuming it's not like, you know, 10 greatest facts or something like this. But generally speaking, reading is a long form piece of content. You could spend two hours, five hours, 10 hours to complete a book on one major central topic. Why is that good? Because you're not 
gratifying yourself immediately. You're learning about something in depth. You're training yourself to go deep rather than go broad and wide. Because remember, it's better to be the master of one than the jack of all trades. No one wants to be the jack of all trades because the jack of all trades is rubbish. Uh, he's, he's like he's kind of okay at lots of things, but he's not really good at one. And so reading would be my number one. My second thing would be films, or if you're in the US, movies. Why? Again, they're longer. Are you going to learn about how to trade from a film? No. But if you are going to entertain yourself, practice looking at long form content over short form content. Trust me, just this habit alone has done so many good things for me because the average film is like an hour and a half, two hours. That's fine. That's fine. Next will be TV shows. Again, the average TV show, probably about half an hour. So again, it's just training your brain. Fourth, YouTube. YouTube is a good platform, but it's so easy to get things wrong with YouTube. It's so easy to basically binge loads of stuff. To give you a, an example, on my channel, the average view duration of a video is about five minutes for a 10 minute video. And so within a 60 minute period, within an hour, someone could potentially be watching 12 pieces of content, 12 pieces of content. Those pieces of content could all be different things about the same topic. So is it really a surprise that most people are so confused and they don't really know what to do and they're constantly switching strategies and they can't focus on one thing? Not really. As opposed to someone who spent that hour reading one topic within 60 minutes and they're still not done on that topic. They're going deep. They're training their brain to be focused, not to be distracted like pretty much everybody else is now with social media. Does that mean that you shouldn't ever use YouTube? No, but it means that you need to use it in a correct way, whether that means watching one video or committing to watching one particular video and then stopping, stop watching that video and implement what that video has taught you. In terms of trading, does that mean you should test anything on a live account? No, you should back test things at least at least 100 times without any risk monitor the results in a spreadsheet and look and see if that concept makes sense to you. That is the way that I would personally use YouTube. Now we're getting into the really dangerous territory, Instagram. Now I deleted my Instagram a long time ago and anybody, I sometimes get people in the comments saying that they've messaged me on Instagram or psych effects on Instagram. I don't have an Instagram account. So those people are not me, just FYI. Instagram is not helpful. Bringing it over to right here, trading screenshots on Instagram. If you follow a load of traders, chances are you're going to see traders on your feed every single day posting new things, screenshots of their winning days. If you've had a losing day with a strategy, which every single strategy has, losing streaks, losses, it happens consistently. And you come off the back of that losing day, you're feeling a little bit bad and you're scrolling through Instagram and you see these other people who've had quote unquote winning days. You're going to think, your brain's going to think these guys know something that I don't. And it's going to trick your brain into thinking that you, that there is a perfect strategy out there. That if they just learn this extra bit of information, they're going to be able to avoid the pain that comes with losses. And all it is, is it's providing yourself with a, route to avoid pain avoid the pain of taking losses you need to embrace that pain because if you can't embrace that pain you'll always 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 fail because it's about the long-term perspective and that is again a quicker way of how to actually overcome the fear of loss in and of itself is switching to a longer term a macro mindset okay so instagram is a no-go for me anything below youtube i will not touch any of these if you go even deeper, you are going to find things like TikTok. If you are using TikTok, I honestly, I honestly feel sorry for you if you are trying to trade or if you're trying to start a business, anything like that. I just don't see any value in TikTok. I don't know, I don't know TikTok very well, but I'm pretty sure the, the average video on there is like 10 seconds long. So Compare that with YouTube, where let's say the average video, the average time someone spends on a video is about five minutes. It's actually probably a lot lower than that. But let's just say it's about five minutes. That's 12 pieces of content an hour. With TikTok, let's just say the average video is 10 seconds. 
you're getting six pieces of content a minute. Six pieces of content a minute. Can we just take a second to appreciate that? That's 60, 60 pieces of content every 10 minutes. And then 60 times six, uh, 360 pieces of content an hour. Do you think that's training your brain to be focused? Or do you think that's training your brain to be distracted? And so is it a surprise when you hit a loss or a losing streak, your brain starts going all these other directions when you're trying to back test, when you're doing all these other things, when you're trying to back test and you're trying to get all the way to hundred trades without changing your rules and you get to trade number 10 and you're like, oh, this isn't working. I need to look at some other thing. I need to add something in here. If that's you, you've got a problem with your focus. You need to improve your focus. You need to remove these. What would I do? I'd remove TikTok, remove Instagram. I'd just stick with these. But YouTube use correctly, correctly being the key word. So day to day, again, people are going to be using, basically going through these processes, randomly marking concepts up on a chart. That's important when you first learn anything. Randomly kind of draw some lines on the chart, be like, okay, cool. I kind of understand how this works. But set timers, be like, I'm going to do this for 15 minutes or half an hour. But then after that, I'm going to transition and look at backtesting. Or if you don't know enough about a strategy yet and you genuinely are a new beginner, then do something like that. Then go and learn a little bit more about strategy, learn a simple strategy online or whatever, and then go ahead and backtest it without risk. Okay. Next thing up, I've already explained this trading concepts on Instagram, trading content binges. Again, I've explained that with the whole YouTube thing. Don't go on endless streaks unless you are at that beginner stage. Be honest with yourself. How much do you know about trading? Are you overwhelmed or are you confused? There's a difference. You're overwhelmed if you're if you already know loads about trading and you just constantly keep filling yourself with new strategies, new concepts, new ideas, but you're confused if you know the strategy, you're just a little bit confused about how it works in a particular situation. If you're confused, the answer isn't more content. The answer is backtesting, okay? And backtesting in the correct way, which again is a whole other topic, which I cover in the PsychFX Academy ex extensively, but um, also I briefly mentioned it on the YouTube channel in, in parts. Next thing, social media binging. Again, I've already kind of touched on this, watching TV, all this other stuff. But the main point is we want to move our brain away from that super excited and excitable state. I know it's difficult to let go of. It took me two years to let go of this. After I realized that this was the problem, it took me about six months to actually fully implement this. Nowadays, I don't use Instagram. The only social media I use will be YouTube. That's it. If my friends want to message me, they can text me. I call my friends. I text my friends. That's it. I don't use any other platforms. Why? Because I don't want to be distracted, both for trading and other projects that I've got going. I've got other things that I want to do with my life. And those things don't add any value. And ultimately, it comes down to do you value your time or not? And if you spend most of your day on Instagram, TikTok, I personally don't think that you value your time at all. And that's fine if you are happy with being entertained and you just, you know, you, you're not so fussed about having and achieving certain things. If that's you, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I enjoy the process of improvement and actually improving different areas of my life. I like that. I think that that is uh, more enjoyable to me. And so I've aligned my habits around my phone and how much entertainment I allow into my brain around that. Okay. So I hope that makes sense, guys. If you have enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate you leaving a like. It helps show me that you like these kind of videos. And uh, if you are the type of person that got to the end of this video, then well done. You are in the minority who actually um, has the concentration to sit through a video. I don't know how long this has been, but you have the concentration to sit through a video. So well done. Um, but yeah, if you go ahead and smash the like button, appreciate it. Go check out the Effects Academy to learn more about these kind of concepts and how I go about actually going into those processes and what I actually want to put my time into and how I structure that and all the strategy stuff, basically everything um, from start to finish, then I highly recommend checking out the Effects Academy. But guys, thank you so much for watching again and I will see you in the next video.